Megan, normally we, we assume that this is probably your least favorite part of Fight Week. It seems to be for most fighters, but you were pretty outspoken when you thought you wouldn't get to do it. So yeah. what, what was the thought process there on saying, you know, I want to do this? Well, this is part of the job. And I think a lot of people and a lot of fighters need practice in front of the camera and speaking to journalists. So when they do get in the position of having to go to a press conference and that, and they get asked the hard questions, they know how to deal with it. I think it's a super important part that I think management fighters and the UFC should be like actively giving them the, the reps that they need. So there wasn't any party that was like, sweet, one last thing I don't have to do. This is my job. If this is like, this is a part of my job and the media is a part of MMA. So why not? It has been a crazy week, no question about it. How would you describe your experience so far? Um, it was it was interesting finding out through social media that it changed. But for me, I was more concerned. Like I just wanted confirmation so I could tell my coaches um, so they could change their flights so that they could go to LA instead of Vegas or wherever it was supposed to be. And once that happened, I was like, okay, well, like I spoke to my management. They kind of were like, look, they're they're in limbo they don't know what they're doing so just bear with us we'll give you the information when we receive it and i was like okay i kept playing my game i was playing xbox <laughs> assassin's creed i just logged 100 hours <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna say was that the toughest part was just the not knowing because it did seem like especially with the holidays and all yeah. that, that people were just kind of not not sure yeah well i didn't find out i was actually flying to vegas first until like monday <laughs> afternoon but like I was just like I'm just gonna pack anyway, and I'm either gonna go to Vegas or I'm gonna go to LA, so I'm gonna be ready. It doesn't. For us, it wasn't really a big deal. It's the same cage, whether it's in Vegas or LA. Like I'm still gonna be doing the same job. I've worked 12 weeks of training for this. You know, one ch location change isn't gonna change my game plan and my goal in getting this win. What, what do you feel about the matchup? I mean, how, how do you feel it plays in your favor? And, and what's what's been the focus? I know you were disappointed after last time out. So what's kind of yeah. been the focus in preparation? Um, I def I really enjoyed this matchup. I think uh, we're very we're both very aggressive pressure fighters. Um, I definitely don't see Cat wanting to stand. You know, there is a, a big height and reach difference, and you know, it's we obviously both want to play to our strengths as MMA. That's how this this game works, and. Definitely for, for us, it's not really about what Kat's been doing, it's more about what we want to do, um, making those those decisions in the cage, the right decisions uh, faster and when we need to, and really just showing how much we've changed in six months. Is it a number one contender fight? We never know with this division, what, what you know, what what's going on, so how, how do you look at this? Um, I hope, I hope it's a number one contender, but we don't really, and that's the thing is in the UFC, rankings don't mean anything anymore. So I'm hoping it's a number one contender, but you just never know. And really for me, it's I would rather see them start signing featherweights. Uh, that's more of a priority for me than, than getting a title shot. Like I hope that I can use my platform to show them that this division is marketable, this division is worth investing in. They start signing people instead of giving them fights at bantamweight. I was gonna say, did that disappoint you? That actually pissed me off more than the location change. I'm like, if you want to fight in a division, then actively, actively campaign for fighting in that division instead of taking a fight at 135 or campaigning for fights at 135. I'm like, clearly, like this is what you get when you bring in bantamweights to open up a division that's not their weight division. When you when you say something like that about bringing bantamweights to fight at featherweight. Tomorrow, uh, I'm sorry, on Saturday, we also have the fight between Chris and Amanda. Do you almost wish that Chris wins so, you know, they stop bringing in bantamweights? Because if Amanda wins, you know she's going to come back to bantamweight to defend her belt. Um, to be honest, I haven't really thought about the Amanda Chris fight beyond wanting the winner. Um, like, I don't, like, I'm more focused on me and my performance and everything else depends on getting my hand raised on December 29th.
How do you see that fight going? Do, do you, do you I ever think, envision something? I like think, that? Uh, like my fight or the Chris fight? The, the Chris fight. I think stylistically, it's a very interesting matchup. They're both very similar in styles. They're both pressure fighters, uh, heavy strikers. I think the key for Chris is to pressure early and pressure constantly. Like it's smothering when you have someone that doesn't respect your power that's constantly walking you down. On the other hand, Amanda needs to make Chris respect her power because a lot of Chris's recent opponents, like. Like, she just doesn't respect the power. Look what happened in the Yana Kunitskaya fight. Like, she didn't respect her power at all. She just walked her down. Look at the finish. Um, but I think, I honestly think Amanda has the power to stop Chris and make her respect it. So I think it's going to be interesting to see how they both adjust to those, you know, game plans because they both have very clear keys to victory here. And I think it's who's going to implement that better. Do you feel like that's the biggest fight in women's MMA history so far? Um... I don't know. I don't really think about fights in terms of like biggest fight in women's yeah. history because the Holly and Ronda, like you guys said that that was the biggest fight in women's history. Now here we are a few years later. Now this is the biggest fight. So I think every few years is going to be the biggest fight in women's history. Like same as, you know, in the men's divisions, biggest fight in men's MMA or whatever it is. So I don't really think of it in terms of that. I think this is amazing matchup between two phenomenal athletes at the top of their division and in their prime. Do you think John Jones should have been allowed to fight this weekend? It's not my decision. Well, in your opinion. I'm what, a believer. What would you do if you were the president of the UFC? I'm a I am, as a clean athlete, I think that you should take responsibility for what's in your system. And if you have something in your system, then it's there for a reason. And that's the whole point of USADA. And here we are. <laughs> Do you trust USADA after, after all this? All I can say is that every time I've been tested, I've come back clean. I'm 100% a clean athlete and I can, I'm proud to say that I'm a clean athlete and that's, that's all I can control. I can't control USADA, I can't control what they do, all I can control what goes into my body and making sure that I am clean. Did you all um, uh, have any hotels in Vegas that, that you guys go to? No. Um, I didn't. I didn't have any family or friends coming in, okay. uh, so that on that side, like it made it easier because I didn't have to like worry about that. But I definitely feel for the other, you know, fighters who have families and the fans. Like I, I feel more for them and like the staff at the UFC. Like the logistical nightmare of what, you know, having to change an entire event to a different state and what that entails in such a short notice. Why do they do that? You think? Why not? Why not just cancel the main event and go go with Chris versus Amanda? I don't know. I don't know the numbers. I'm sure. I'm sure John brings in a lot of numbers, and maybe it's a pay-per-view thing. I have no idea. That's it's not my. It's not my area of expertise. I don't get those information. You, you talked about numbers, Last uh, and obviously there's some criticism about the UFC's promotion of uh, the featherweight division. Um, there's still no rankings. In the UFC page. There's not a picture of me on their page either. Page. Um, with the way, with the recent obviously news of Demetrius Johnson going to one championship, uh, the way women, uh, men's flyweight is ending up, is yeah. there a concern about women's featherweight oh, being put out? Yeah. I felt the same way when they implemented it because they didn't actually sign anyone. Um, but, like, I can't control what they do. All I can control is, like, putting on great performances, making them aware that. There is featherweights that are marketable, that is promotable, and give like I guess my voice to like you guys. Like that's all I can control. Like Have I can't control what they do. Dialogue with you, Dana White, <laughs> maybe me about. I don't talk to Dana. <laughs> I don't talk to Dana. My management, really like my management, talk to like Mick and like Hunter, and those guys. Like I don't really have much to do with all that kind of side. I'm sure if there was something they would let me know, but I want to fight in the UFC. You know, I feel like this is a great platform to, to fight on and, and it's it's a lot of fighters' goal is to fight in the UFC. So, you know, I definitely want to stay here and I'm hoping that they do start doing stuff and I can keep my job here. Thanks, thank you. No problem. Thank you.